Solaris Ancient Relics Story Pack DLC releases today, June 4th, where you can uncover the ruins of long dead civilizations. So what is this all about? What features does it have? Is it cool? Let's have a look together using the official dev diaries and some in-game footage from the preview version. What can you do? Uncover the ruins of long dead civilizations. In relic worlds to piece together the story of their rise and eventual downfall, mine their derelict cities and ships to unearth the truth, discover powerful relics and harness them for your own empire's ambition. What does that mean? Well, there's a new system integrated into Stellaris that is called Archaeology. The Archaeology you can find similar to uh, anomalies. You can find archaeological sites. Basically, that's when the anomaly is a short story, the archaeological site is basically a book that you find that you can uncover. So it's a story pack. You can unlock even several chapters of the digs, the dig sites, and that is what it's mostly about. But there's, of course, it's called relics. It's not called story pack only. It's also called relics. You can find powerful relics there. Also from previous expansions, for example, if you defeat an in-game crisis, you get something. If you defeat uh, the Space Dragon, you get something, an ancient relic that is good for your empire. You can use it from time to time. It has passive and active effects. It's very powerful. Where do you find these archaeological sites? These archaeological sites are found throughout your empire, and some of them are very special and found on the so-called relic worlds, as big worlds that have a multitude of archaeological sites so you can dig and dig and dig there and uh, unlock chapter after chapter that will give you some artifacts some small minor artifacts which you can use to own boosts for your empire and also sometimes relics that give significant benefits to your empire and also if you're using the new point score system a really big buff at the point score too and as I said, an active and passive effect. Then there's more. Those who came before, two extinct precursor civilizations, Baal and the Sroni, we'll look at that. And the Relic Worlds, as I said, a dig in. Yeah, well, you can really dig in there. It's a fun little thing to have the archaeology. It is, um, it has something to it that it is a little bit more for. Yeah, that's going deep into the game. If you play wide empires, you might have an advantage because the sites, the archaeological sites, you can only look at them if they are inside your empire's borders. And it's also not only the Baal and the Sroni of the precursor civilizations, also all the other precursor civilizations are now transformed into the archaeology system. Not completely, but partly. That means you will get also a lot of minor artifacts from these things, like the Erasians or something like that. So let's have a look at the Dev Diaries to get a little bit more in detail and where it's fitting will go to the game itself. So that's where they showed archaeology first. Archaeological sites. You have this menu then that you can unlock. You have to assign a scientist to it. The skill bonus is dependent on the skill level of your scientist. And there's also a trait that will give you an advantage um, being able to unlock this faster. What this does is basically you're playing for a round of usually 90 days. Once these 90 days are over, then a roll is made and you either get clues or you get a breakthrough. In this case, you don't have enough clues because the number of clues increases your breakthrough chance. And so if you have minus 20%, you will still need a couple of clues because before you can have a breakthrough and unlock the next chapter, that is the introduction, the prologue that you can al always see, and that is the chapter you're already working on. You can see here the excavation log gives you this as well. You, you have unlocked the first stage here with only one clue and then went to the next stage, that is, and you can see here in the, it's color-coded, that was yellow, so it was okay, and red is a little bit harder, and that's also where the breakthrough chance of minus 20% comes in. And here you can see a little bit more. Uh, it's dependent on dice rolls, like in uh, Siege Mechanics of EU4, if you're, you're saying something like that. So you, you have a roll, basically, I think it's a, I think it's a D20, like in D&D, and you can get either, either clues or a breakthrough. 
or uh, the status quo, and it's influenced by the archaeology archaeology skill and the clues minus the difficulty. So um, let's have a look in game how that looks. So that's my empire I've made here. It's also uh, I have a little role play going that you might follow. And you can see here we have different things. And this is the one that I've unlocked most. It's called the Endless Expanse. It has kind of a site summary. And there's a story here going on. In chapter one, you get one minor artifact that can give you buffs and so for your empire. Uh, at uh, chapter two, you get another part of the story and a little bit more artifacts found. And we're currently trying to uh, excavate chapter three in this very nice thing the breakthrough chance is already 70 percent we have a scientist assigned to it difficulty is two it's easy skill bonus helps as well we've got a lot of clues so that's that explains why the breakthrough chance is so high but there's other sites like this one that is a precursor site and why can you see that well because of the picture if you know that that's i think the Rassians. i'm not sure exactly but that is a known picture and then you have the difficulty that starts with hell plus each chapter can have a different difficulty value so you can start this and then uh, it will be a long time before you unlock the first dig but you can do it it's not uh, out of the question it will just take a, a longer time and it will take more clues to unlock this of course a higher level scientist will be able to do that more quickly and look at look this here we sped up to be able to un uh, to get that popular rock story here as well that archaeological site that was in danger of being captured by the Eureki interstellar empire and they also have an archaeological site the echoes inside and you can see that is also connected uh, to the Erasians like same picture sh is the shared background and that's all very cool and there's something else I can I can show you there's stories of some relics you can find that is a story story that is i think uh exclusive to ancient relics it's the rubricator we've uncovered the last known location of the rubricator an ancient alien artifact and it's here actually uh we haven't visited it yet but we'll soon we have we have do not yet know its purpose it is rumored to hold great power artifact of considerable power so I have I have not played that far into it but I've tested it a bit of course so uh, let's have a look at the relics and uh, the dev diary about the relics so that dev diary was called relics and relics relic world and it was relatively close to release already with 150 uh, dev diary 150 the preview version for streamers got out and uh, so that was very very close to it like that was only two weeks away so it's pretty accurate what is in there we have relic worlds as i said ancient relics are relic worlds it's a smaller part but if you find a relic world it's very likely that you will be the first to excavate its archaeological site many chapters and high difficulty is what you will find there you can also transform it in, into an ecumenopolis like that's some kind of city only planet uh, if you want so later, and like if you have excavated everything, or you can just do it just like that, and then the sites will vanish. So there's treasure to be found also in these worlds. By, by, uh, by definition, like the world themselves is also quite important to have. Then you could see what some of the relics you can see here. Like that one is the Pretherin Brood Queen. If you defeated the Pretherin, you will get that. It has Society Research plus 30 per month. That is the passive effect. It has an activation cost of 10,000 food. And what does it do? It breeds a small Pretherin fleet. And there's a couple of more of these. Like, for example, here the Great Khan's Throne Recovered. If you defeat the mid game crisis uh, when the Great Khan, the Marauder Empire, goes on a rampage then you get the Khan's throne with some more special ability I've loaded up the game and I wanted to show you uh, these ruins because that's one of these relic worlds as you can see it's called Sujenja 
five, an entire planet covered in vast structures. This fallen megalopolis surely has secrets to be unearthed. It's very difficult. Difficulty hell plus. You can assign a scientist as normal. And here you can unlock this. This is connected to a precursor civilization as well as you can see of this picture. I'll try to find you some other relic world. I've looked around, but I didn't find any other relic worlds and why is this it's easy to explain many ring world uh many relic worlds you will only unlock by following the archaeological sites and the hints and traces of the precursor civilizations that will often lead you to a precursor relic world that is not openly out there in the map but just like in the old precursor quests a system just gets added spawns in the galaxy and is added to the hyperlane network and then you will have access there and you will not only have a system as previously but you will also have a planet there that is a relic world and where you can relish in the relics if you so want so then there's randomly generated precursors that's new and among these are now new precursors the baal and the zroni that's two plantoid precursors the one the baal were some kind of gaia terraforming benevolent uh, civilization hive mind and the other ones the zroni mo possibly the most powerful psionics to have a psionics to have ever existed were, were the first to di discover the dimension which had which has to be known as the shroud and so they have wandered into the shroud and rumors are they still exist there in the shroud and live like gods and you can follow them and it's also something that a sub of me has told me that of course it's the zroni it's connected to that zro resource a lot and you will find out more about that resource and their connection probably it's just a speculation in there because zro is connected to psionics and all kinds of things so it will be fun and of course like the random precursors what is that meant uh, previously you had some kind of a like a, a fixed map like at the top of a galaxy you had for example the Erasians. on the left you had other other ones on the on the right you had other ones and they were fixed in these areas you would find artifacts for them but now it's randomized where you find them of course they also get designated one area where they have lived and there you will find the stuff belonging to them it's not designated fixed as before it's new for every new galaxy which i find pretty cool as you can see here you can unlock special things with the minor artifacts here the secrets of the erasians that's connected to the old precursors they were admittedly ex experts in the field of biology and it gives you secrets of the erasians modifier research speed biology plus 20 percent pop growth speed plus five percent so you can earn uh, very powerful buffs if you if you follow these hints and traces about the precursors and that's very cool and we'll see what the bowel and the sroni will bring us probably a lot of story and extremely powerful buffs and maybe a relic after the the quests now let's get to the critical points is it worth 9.99 well i think it is it's uh it's a cool story pack you're also supporting the transformation of the game as always there is 20 new relics added and stories connected to that and a few relic worlds so there's plenty of stories there compared to leviathans where you had space monsters this is about relics and you have relics and you have quite a couple of stories that are very well written what i've, what I've seen so far and uh it's just fun it's just um if you don't buy every expansion you have to consider if you're a story person or a research person or like someone who likes to play maybe wider empires but that's not too important and it's just are you do you really like story or something like that then definitely the St stellaris ancient relics story pack is for you and it has to be mentioned that the ancient relics mechanics of the archaeology and the minor artifacts and stuff like that is also 
uh, allowed for modders to take advantage of, which means there might probably be uh, some ancient relics mod story packs available in the future. So to test these mechanics and uh, to relish in them, you don't need the story pack. But what you will get in the story pad and what they've explicitly said so is the unique stories they have composed. And I think they, they hold true. And I'm also excited to have mods coming in so you have even more relics and stories and archaeological sites you can uncover. That's pretty cool. Is it worth 10 euros? Probably yes. It's not a it's not a meager a portrait pack it also has that's maybe minor known it has four uh, music tracks and these music tracks have you've been hearing all along i've put them into the background of the video so <laughs> if you want to re-watch that thing you will you will hear the four sound uh soundtrack editions i think if you've bought the soundtrack complete soundtrack dlc then you'll you'll have them anyways but uh like here goes so um what else is there there's some system requirements it's uh has to be said that stellaris will now have with ancient relics 64-bit version only 32 bits is no longer supported which is why uh you have minimum operating system of Windows 7 with 64 bits. But of course, you can run it on a very old machine. And if you, I mean, if you don't have access to the 64 bit system, then you should buy this. Uh, <laughs> you should stay on the 2.2 version of, of the game. But I think virtually everyone will have that. And that's also what they've said. So. The graphics cards and everything is an in the affordable stage. They were very old graphics cards. It like it's like seven, eight, nine years old in the minimum and in the recommended one. That GTX 560 Ti with one gigabyte VRAM. Yeah. Ah. Uh, it's not that tough to get. You can have it on, on Mac as well with a little bit higher uh, things you have to do even with a core i5 that's quite a good computer you have to have so uh, with a Mac you you have higher system requirements with uh, Linux you have the same as Windows do I recommend it for me I uh, it's a dream I really like the stories I like to have randomized stories coming at you i think it's a good story pack it feels well the mechanics are well integrated and uh, yeah you can uncover so much more it's it's just fun i like to play wide empire so i i can uh, grab some more of these archaeological sites and uh, i'm looking forward to all actually using the relics i've had a look at some of the mechanics they are pretty cool and uh all of that said, I recommend to buy it, but if you don't have all DLCs, please look at the expansions first. There's a lot of add-ons for Stellaris. For example, Utopia is very good, and uh, Synthetic Dawn is also one that I would definitely recommend. Apocalypse is something like, oh, with the big ones first, and you'll probably find some sales for them some someday around the launch you'll probably find sales for the older ones and you can take advantage of them first if you want so i'd really go for the big expansions first they are basically mandatory and then later on you can add the story packs and then uh, things like the portrait packs so uh there's also a recommendation of me for the complete soundtrack well, if you have the complete soundtrack, you will get the complete music, and the music is just awesome in, in Stellaris. So I hope you enjoy it as well. Thank you for watching and happy gaming, and for the completion of this video, yeah, if you liked it, consider to subscribe, 
and uh, stay in contact. We'll look together at the launch trailer. See you, Stellaris or a YouTuber. Among the stars. A great time until next time. And happy gaming. Only now is this is one where I can. Signing out. That all that time we were looking in the wrong direction. That's a relic. <laughs>